Good morning, everyone. It's Rachel here, and we're going to do um, Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. And I've been experimenting a little bit before I turn my video on so that I knew, had a bit of direction um, while I'm stitching with you guys. So I'm going to show you how I did this. Um, at first, I thought I, maybe I didn't like it, but um, I do like it now that I've finished it. It actually stressed me all night, that one. <laughs> um, here on these little flowers, I'm going to do some different blues. I pulled out these ones. Um, do the little forget me not so uh, that one I used this variegated thread that my sister sent me from Steph Francis um, I might use a little bit more of that um, and it's just just a loose sort of satin stitch going on there and then I've got two colors that I pulled out which ones this one where's the other one and this one they're going to go in the centers of those um, I'll show you how I did this. This is a suggestion from my mum um, to get the nice sort of bulky sort of leaf. And what else? I haven't really done anything else so far. But my hand's hurting because I used a number five perle cotton there and it, I couldn't get it to go through and it, it was very, very painful. So I won't do that again. Um, so let's do this flower first. I won't do all of the flower. I'll just show you how I got the thing. But it kind of... I just wanted to do something a bit dimensional because we are doing fancy flowers. So I need, where's my, oh gosh, now I've got to find my needle. I had a, a big needle um, for that. I've even bending my needles. Here it is. I've already got some in there. Oh, I'll get rid of that. Um, so how is everybody? Just got an item of, of business to talk about. So um, we noticed on, uh, and I'm not allowed to be repetitive I meant to make a note to myself not to be repetitive uh, and ranty. So um, basically, we noticed on Instagram that there are some random posts going up on on the Journal of Stitchery hashtag, like things or or stitching projects that aren't related to the project that we're doing, or even just like there's been paper things going up in journals, paper journals and stuff, which is not what we're doing. So we've decided um, we're not going to use that hashtag anymore. Um, we're not, we're going to unfollow it. We recommend that you unfollow that hashtag um, if you want to just see things related to what we're doing. Um, and we're only going to be using the Roxy's Journal of Stitchery hashtag from now on. So um, if you want um, everyone to see your work, you'll need to use the Roxy's Journal of Stitchery hashtag and not the Journal of Stitchery hashtag. So we just thought we'd tell you that because all this crazy stuff's been coming up on it. Now, I'm not allowed to say any more because otherwise I'll become repetitive, but that's just a friendly reminder. I'll try and remember and write it in the description book, uh, box, not the description book, um, to use the Roxy's Journal of Stitchery hashtag and unfollow the Journal of Stitchery, because otherwise you're going to get random, random things being posted. Right, that's done. And let's talk about what we're doing. It's kind of like a little turkey work, but I'm just putting it at the... It's very tough because this has heat bond light. I do not like stitching through heat bond light. And I don't actually use it very often. These I had done, I had prepared many years ago for something I was doing, I don't know, and I had put the heat bond light on there. And um, the only benefit of the heat bond light is that it doesn't, they don't fray, but they're going to be fairly heavily stitched. So I don't think fraying is really such an issue. So it's kind of like a little bit of turkey work, but it's only at the base of the flowers. And I sort of, as you saw, I held them to one side. I end that off. I'm not, I do one petal at a time because otherwise I feel like I might get tangled. Oh, it's all time. My hands are in, in agony actually today because it's been, it's been tough. It has been tough business. Right. So then I got this um, sort of raspberry, raspberry coloured perle cotton, perle cotton, whatever you want, however you want it. I hear all manner of pronunciations. I've always said perle, but I'm not quite sure. Um, so in the States, you guys say pearl and in the UK and Australia, we mostly say perle. So who knows? Um, I, I think... Yeah, I don't know. I think it may be the French pronunciation. None of us pronounce it like the French do. I'd love to hear a French person say it. Because um, I think it's a French word. 
Okay, so what I'm doing here to hold these down, I'm going, um, just doing an, an, a number, I don't know how many, just till I feel like it's done, a number of rows of this raspberry colour. I really thought it was just like a crazy thing that I was doing when I started it. But you know, I persevered and I'm quite happy with it because I want fancy flowers. And some of them won't be so fancy, but I wanted some of them to be fancy because that was the prompt. Although the adjective really is just something extra that's popped in there. You could just do flowers. Okay, so that's that. That'll do with that colour. And then, and so at this point, when you're changing colour often, it's rec I recommend, and I think other people have recommended, have a few needles threaded up so that way you don't have to, you know, unthread this one because I'm going to need it again for the next petal. Then I've got this one. See, it's already threaded because I did the other flower. And I might, uh, I might not have enough on here, but we'll try. Um, where am I? I'm down here. I was looking at the wrong one. Um, I'll do another a number of rows until I'm satisfied in the next shade with my satin stitch. Now this one's a bit smaller, so I probably don't need to do quite. I probably did too many of the darker ones. I probably didn't need to do quite so many because I forgot my petals are smaller. So I might just go back over it with this colour. That'll do. And then just end it off. Now, someone in our Facebook group was having trouble with her knots. Um, just make sure you pull them tight. I've done two loopy knots there. And you can leave your um, ends a little bit longer as well. And then when you're stitching nearby, you might catch it. You might catch it. So then we get the scissors. Um, with these ones, I did go with a similar colour pink and just put a few stitches in to hold them. I didn't do it with that one because it was smaller. I didn't need to. I might not need to here. Just to hold them a bit more under control. And then you're just trimming them down. I'm just going to curve my scissors a bit to, to your petal shape. Just to get the shape. It's like giving the dog a haircut. We don't want our petals to be like shaggy dogs. There we go. And that one's done. And they'll do the other ones the same way. And that's how I did that. This here is my pearly cotton thread number eight. Not that one. The other one. Um, this one and I just did four wraps and I left it I left it loose I left them loose um, so they got little loopy bits because I wanted them to be chunky because I've got chunky petals so I needed to have chunky chunky French knots okay so that's that so I'm just going to go around and do those then here I did um, this bit here but that's more that one looks like it's got more of a leaf although here I might do that and then I might put a leaf over it. So I used this pale green and I'll just show, I'll just do it for you. Although I would normally do that. No, I did that before the French knot, so I can do that now. What's this? What's going on here? Look at this. Oh, because it's double. I'll just cut them both off. So it's double. That's what that's what's happening there. Um, I don't know what thread that is. That's um one I um, got from my mum so how is everyone today didn't ask you that how are you all I hope you're all well some wonderful one oh, look at that chunky did chunky knot there um, some wonderful um, blocks out there this is so thick I can't tell you so my that's gonna go I'm actually gonna put a leaf over it there's actually a leaf there in the pattern so I'm going to actually put, I'm just going to do some satin stitch to create, you know, the base of the flower that's holding onto it. But what I did with this one was I, I went vertical and then I went horizontal over the top. It just made it stand out a little bit more. I haven't done my stitches very close. That's not a problem. You just come back and do them after. Now, most of these stitches will be covered because I'm going to put a leaf. 
So basically, in this case, with this um, fabric that I had stitched down, this here, um, I mean, they're pretty flowers, but I'm really just using them as a base to get the shape of my flower. What am I catching on to? I'm catching on to that. I'm going to rip that off, cut that off. It's annoying me. I keep pulling it. And then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to worry more about this section because that section is not going to be covered by a leaf. Just come out to the side here. It is a bit of a struggle. Um, at you know, like I've I saw some people have posted that they struggle with what to do next, and I'm the same. I procrastinate, guys. I've been procrastinating about this all week, thinking, oh gosh, and getting anxiety. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And then and then and then I thought, well, I know what I want to do on the forget me nots. Just basic satin stitch and I, I know I want I knew I wanted to attempt this and I might trim those down a little bit more I haven't decided yet um, I knew I wanted to do that so then I thought well why don't we just start there and I you know I was chatting to my mum my, my mum is she has a bit of an idea of what she's going to do but she says also one flower leads to another so sometimes you have a, a, a vague vision but you're not quite sure what stitches you want to use or something like that and just really one flower leads to another I said to mum um, today before I put the video on, uh, before I started videoing, that I wasn't, um, I didn't want to just do, like you could just fill in all the shades in your satin stitch or do short and long stitch um, to sort of fill them all in. But I just wanted to have a bit of variety in, in textures and, and stitches. So um, that's why I decided to have a go at that. So you can see I'm just going over what I already did. And it just get, and you could go over like it, you could come back up um vertically if you want to. And then you just um it just creates a bit more dimension. But as I said, I am going to put a little leaf there as well, I think. And you're probably thinking, how are you going to do that? Well, I'll tell you in a minute. Let's finish this off. nearly at the bottom one more stitch and we're done okay so one way um, I'm sure we're all getting aching hands working through all these layers and it can be quite unpleasant actually at times because it's quite painful um, one way to help yourself is get these, in fact I might put it on, these silicone um, thimbles and you put them on your forefinger and it just takes some of the pressure off because it grips the needle and it just takes some of the pressure off your fingers um, when you're, you don't have to struggle so much when you're pulling through the threads. Now here I'm going to put a leaf. Now I've got this, um, this is just like an acrylic felt but it's actually quite, it's not a really plasticky feeling sort of one it's actually quite nice and I'm just going to cut a rectangle it's not the right color I'm going to cover it it is a bit of a struggle so I just cut a rectangle and then cut my sides and then just trim it down until these are a bit of a whopping scissors I probably could do with some smaller scissors but anyway I do like to use the whoppers don't I okay I'm going to put that there and I'm going to embroider over it. So what, I'm, what I'll do first is just grab this little piece of random pale green and I'm just going to running stitch down the centre. Just running stitch down the centre if I can. Just to hold it in place and then I'm going to embroider over it. Okay. 
okay. Oops. So go through the fabric to knot and pull it tight. So you make it, you have this loop here and you go through with your needle and pull it tight and that, that should be enough. But don't cut your threads too short and that way you can be, you'll be sure that it will stay. But it won't matter because this is going to be stitched down anyway. So I'm just going to choose a colour. Um, that didn't work so well. That went through with that really thick thread and it was a nightmare. It was an absolute nightmare, if I'm honest. I'm trying not to put my threads over here because it will create a shadow for you guys. So hopefully I didn't go off screen then. I've just had a flash. I'm thinking, I think I might use a wool. I'm going to mix up my threads. Where's my wools? Here they are. Here they are. Now these are quite nice. These are Appleton Cruel, cruel you know, Cruel Embroidery. Sounds like I'm saying cruel, you know. <laughs> You know what I mean. Okay, let's just choose a colour. I think I'm going to go with this colour. Oh, yeah, that's a really nice colour. It's very lovely. It's lovely thread to embroider with. I don't use too long a length of it because um, it wears as it goes through the fabric. I don't think I'm going to be, I'm be dreaming of threading that needle. That's not a, I don't want a thick needle, but I want a needle that I can thread. I probably need to go to my needle book. Take that one out. No, I shouldn't have taken that one out. Um, I'll get my needle book. I've got lots of needles in here. Um, I don't want one of these really thick ones. So they seem to be diminishing my needles. I'm not putting them, I haven't been putting them back in their home. And so they are just disappearing. Let me see this one, just a sec. Now, I, maybe I can use my threader. Oh, that, there's a thread there. Yes, I'll use this. I'm just a bit unco at times, there we go. Right. So here, a lot of layers to go through. It's not fun. I'm going to work on one side. I'm coming, I'm going to be covering my, I'm going to put this on. I'm going to try and sit, fold this back because it's annoying me. I'm going to try and stay on screen. The nice thing about using these walls too is they, I don't know the numbers of them. I didn't keep the numbers on them when I did them. They feel quickly. And the nice thing about having a piece of felt underneath too is if you leave gaps, it doesn't matter. Oh. I don't want my stitches to be too regular. So I really I'm showing you a bit of this and a bit of that. And then you can adapt into your project if you want to. If you're looking for something else, you're thinking, oh, um, what else can I do? See, I left that gap there because it kind of gives you, um, you know, different colours without any effort. I think it'll come together once I get going a bit more with my flowers and my idea sort of evolves. Now this will be tough here. Maybe when I get over the other stitching that I did.
I've gone quiet because I'm constant. I like that messy look. This one was too too regular for me. I almost feel like I want to take that one out. But it was such a struggle to put it there. I don't know. I'll think about that one. But I like this one more because it's more messy. Oh, hard work. I'll have an aching hand tomorrow and I'll think, why is my hand so sore? I'm getting rheumatism and then I'll be like, oh no, it was the doing the stitchery. There we go. That's what it looks like. I'm going to put a vein down the scent in a slightly darker color. I'm going to leave this threaded because I'll probably do a few more leaves like that in different spots. And I'll probably change color too. So we've got all different colors. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to get, choose a thread. I'm going to choose a, a darker color that's too similar we need something darker it won't stand out is that too dark that's too dark that one's nice or that one maybe I prefer that one or that no this one because this is a more bluey tone this wool okay See if we can thread. How long How long will it take me to thread this one? Well, it won't because I'll, you know what? I'm going to use my, what's this needle? Have I got something attached? Oh, yes, I still need that. Needles everywhere. Got threads everywhere. I do get into a mess. I still need that. Leave that thread. Here's one. We'll use this one. I won't waste your time trying to thread it. I'll use my threader. Now, I often get asked about the threader. Most of you already know the answer. Uh, the threader uh, came from a shop in Sydney. I don't know what it's called. It's a needle threader, that's what it's called. But, uh, you know, they're all different types. It's very handy, that one. And I attached it there because I can guarantee you it would have been lost. You can see how this is much nicer than that. I might have to take that out. That can happen. Because I'm not happy with it. And it, it will annoy me. And here I'm going to do, if I can, it's going to be hard work, but it's working. I'm going to do stem stitch. So I'm going to come up halfway in my stitch there so they overlap. That way the stitches just overlap. You can see why it didn't really matter sort of with the running stitch to hold the leaf on. It didn't really matter. I even actually quite liked it without the the um, center, the vein going down the center. I have that coming up there, and then what I might do is just do some little stitches like this. I think that'll tie it in together a little bit. Want big ones. Probably need one up here. Oh, came undone. Didn't want to do that. I am thinking I liked it more without the vein. This is a problem. I won't be taking everything out. I'm going to take everything, put it in and take it out. See, these things happen to me, not just to other people. I do persevere and then I have to take it all that and it won't be all oh, shivers. Shiver my timbers. Nearly said a bad word. Now I'll be in trouble from my mum. Oh, it's not too bad. I'll leave it. Probably wasn't quite the right green. I went too far out on a limb. But you know what? Just leave it. If you don't really hate it, then leave it and it'll just all sort of be blendy, blendy at the end of the day in with the rest. Okay. Right. 
so that's that and then here I'm just doing the satin stitch do you need to see that I wanted to show you up here I'm going to do the little knotty ones that I had I had them on one of my things uh, I think on my title page and someone wanted to see I'm just trying to decide what color do I want to do I don't want to do it too bright a color anything like that um, do you think I could manage with one of these? My sister gave me, this was my Christmas present, were all these Steph Francis threads, and she bought me some of the sample sort of threads that they have. Um, I don't know whether some of these are more for couching. I was thinking that would be nice. That would be, look how they are, they're sort of separated. I'm just hanging them on my light here until I, um, and I've been winding them on things. So in that one was also this uh, number five pearl and then we've got this one I think I might use this one hopefully I'll be I think you can embroider with it so I'll snip that bit off so I might just I'll just cut a length off I don't need too much I'll use my threader and I'll use a, a big needle I think this one maybe and we'll thread it Oh, I need to use this side. Well, that wasn't too hard. It's very, it's silk. It's like some sort of silk. So, to do the, um, I've got to remember, to do the little knots, what I do is I put my knot in the end here. Do a quilter's knot. Wait, I let go of it. Silly me. Hold your tail down the needle. Do you not? Slide it down. Just trim that because I don't want that to be too long. I don't want it to be near the knot. And then go like that. And then I come back up. You could anchor it if you want to. I'm not worried about it. I don't anchor mine. And then I just put my knot and I sort of hold it near where I want the knot to go. See, you just hold it there and knot it, just slide it down and it's where I want it to go. So with one, one amount, I get two knots and snip it and start again. It's fairly easy. So I just do my quilters knot, just doing it twice. This is lovely stuff to stitch with. Actually, I'm thinking it's lovely. It's a chunky one. Just move those out of the way. Put that there, pull it up a little bit. Come back in. Goes through quite nicely. And do my knot. And you just hold it to get the knot to go where you want. You just hold on to it and then slide it and slowly pull and slide. Like so, pull it tight, and there we go. Do another one. Make a nice change in colour here. Pull it tight, snip off the extra. I'll come back up over here actually and have that color over here as well and so that means I've got six I might make it uneven and just do one and then end it off on the bottom that's all right there we go and so I'll do one more Okay, and that one can go in, I'll put that one in here. And all I need to do is just pull this one. I'm not going to, oh, I pulled that too far. I'm not going to come back up. I'm just going to go here. I'm going to hold on to it, push it to the side and hold it, and then just end off like you normally would. Go through the loop, pull it, 
Oops. I also went through a little bit of fabric. And that's how you get the knotted, wormy centre in the, what's it called? In the, there we go, look at that. Okay, so that's done. Um, do I want to use any of this anywhere? I don't think so. So I'll, I'll, let, I'll have to wind that. I'm not going to waste that. That can be couched on something, so I would never get rid of that. Okay, so, uh, right, what's next? So these are just going to be little satin stitches. I just follow the direction of the petals, and I'm going to have some little knots in there. I won't show you that. Here I'm going to do um, sort of a satiny stitch. Not with that colour. I need a pale yellow. Here we go. This colour. I'm going to use the wool because I like to have different... I like to use... You can use all pearl cottons. It's all right. Pearl, not pearly. Stranded cottons. Um, but I do like to... Um, this is a thin one. I do like to use different threads and you get different sort of textures happening. I'm hoping I can thread this. No. Dream on. So I'll put this on here. This is probably the longest video ever. I was, I was saying to my, oh, it'd only be half an hour video today. Especially because I can't thread my needle. It's painful. It's painful for me and it's painful for you. There we go. So with these flowers, I'm just going to capture the um, the mid-tone, I think. That's the plan. And this is not such a thick wall, so it's not going to fill it so quickly. I could double it over. It's a very fine one. Might not, this might not be an Appleton one. It might embroidery wool. It might be a DMC one. I had a few DMC ones as well. It's very thin. That's okay. We get a different look. So you can just see I'm just colouring in, really. It's just colouring in with thread. Okay, so that's what's going to happen there. I won't put you through seeing all of that. And then when I've done that, then I didn't then decide. I was thinking I might just do some knots in there. Um, but, you know, I might decide something else. I might not like the white. I don't know. So I've got plenty of work to do here. Um, I am going to be doing, actually I don't mind that leaf now that I'm coming back. I'm going to be doing all of the, most of the leaves I think, maybe not all of them. I'll do some of the leaves in there, but some of them I might embroider. But I felt like, you know, they might um, need, I'll do it smaller, but they might need um, a little bit of more, more bulk, the leaves, because otherwise they'll end up flat um, because we've got some bulky flowers. Um, oh, and here I just did um, bullion stitch in the centre and I haven't decided about these roses yet. Um, so maybe that'll be next week, finishing it off. I'll, I, when I progress with those, I will film it, so you might see that next week. So I think I'll end the video here. There's plenty of different things to try if you want to. Um, I hope you enjoyed that and I will put some photographs um, at the end. I might finish that off. Um, and then I'll do finish off a few things and then I'll do my photographs. So I hope you enjoyed that and happy stitching everyone. Remember, um, if you want us to see what you're doing, 
Um, besides the Facebook group, please use the hashtag Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. And we are unfollowing the Roxy's, uh, we are unfollowing hashtag Journal of Stitchery because it's become um, not relevant to what we're doing. So thank you so much again, and I will see you next week. Bye.